tell us um, just where Jane Doe is now and what has happened to her. So Jane Doe is in a, an adult female facility in Connecticut. There's only one female facility in Connecticut. And because of her status as a juvenile, she has to be separated from any and all, from sight and sound, from any and all adults. So she's in virtual isolation from anyone else in, uh, in that jail. And, and, and why are they, um, uh, why is the state claiming that uh, they have so much problem being able to handle her? Well, you covered that uh, a little bit here. She was in DCF supervision from the age of five and sexually abused from the age of eight through f 15. So that was about seven years of sexual abuse that she suffered. While she was in a residential treatment facility through DCF supervision, a uh, staff member uh, aggressively approached her, placed her in an illegal restraint. Uh, that staff member was later discharged for that illegal restraint, and she defended herself. Uh, after experiencing sexual abuse for close to seven years, a child will have a certain sensitivity to touch or approach and may interpret certain situations from a very defensive perspective, and the staff should have been well aware of that. So in response to that, DCF just wanted to pass the buck on, so to speak, to the Department of Corrections. And they wanted to just uh, dump her on the Department of Corrections and say, listen, we don't want to take care of her anymore. You take care of her. Mm. Uh, Jane Doe is a trans girl. Why was she placed in a male prison? Well, she's actually not in a male prison now, but the original intention of the DCF in their motion was to place her in a male facility in full denigration of her status as a trans female. Why they intended on doing that, I don't know. DCF, DCF's mandate is to act in the best interests of their children, knowing full well that she's a transgender female. To put her in a male facility uh, would just uh, create a condition of, uh, in no certain terms, harm to her. And what about the issue of a DCF or the Department of Children and Families' responsibilities in this case, given the fact that she claims she was abused while she was under their custody? Well, that's curious, because what it does is it brings to light some of the issues that affect DCF uh, agencies across the nation. Uh, DCF agencies historically have had some difficulty in dealing with uh, children who suffer from sexual abuse or just abuse generally. There needs to be more funding for DCF agencies so they can create uh, safe environments for these children if they have to be removed from their families. As we can see here, there's a lack of facilities that are available for children like Jane. In her affidavit to the court, Jane Doe details a litany of sexual abuse that took place under the Department of Children and Family Supervision at the hands of relatives and the staff at DCF, starting when she was eight. She wrote, quote, at about 12, I was placed by DCF at a residential facility in Massachusetts, where a worker used to show the other children pornographic magazines. And on two occasions, I was in his office. He had me perform oral sex on him. At about 13, at Connecticut Children's Place, a DCF facility, a staff member took me off school grounds, took me and another transgender female to the movies and dinner. In the parking lot after dinner, the other transgender female performed oral sex on him, and he drove to a more secluded place where we both performed oral sex on him. And at about age 13, at CCP, another boy who was a resident came into my room at night, placed his hand over my mouth, placed my face into a pillow, into a pillow and anally raped me. She goes on to detail multiple other incidents of sexual violence, including abuse she experienced while working as a sex worker, writing, quote, I'm tortured by these memories. Chase Strangio of the ACLU. Um, talk about um, what has happened to uh, this young transgendered woman now in prison in solitary. I mean, I think, unfortunately, what this case shows uh, is it's a part of a much larger and systemic uh, problem with our both our criminal and our civil confinement systems, whereby trans people, particularly trans girls and trans women of color, are just placed in solitary confinement as a matter of course. And it's almost always done ostensibly for their safety, but what we know <laughs> is that the harms of solitary confinement are absolutely devastating. Um, they're particularly, you know, de devastating for 
young people uh, whose, you know, whose brains are still developing, who are still growing, uh, and then they're even more traumatic for people who have a, a history of, of trauma, like Jane does. Um, and what we also know from about a decade of comments to the Prison Rape Elimination Act is that trans people, who are almost universally housed in solitary confinement, are more vulnerable to sexual abuse while in, in solitary, from usually from officers and other staff. And the figures, um, the statistics are staggering. <laughs> among all transgender people, 16 percent have been incarcerated, and among black transgendered people, almost half, 47 percent, have been incarcerated. The, the numbers from the National Transgender Discrimination S Survey are indeed staggering. So these are the drivers of incarceration disproportionately impact trans women of color in particular, and then once incarcerated, the incidents of violence are particularly acute for trans people. In one uh, California study of trans women in a men's prison there, uh, they found that 59 percent of transgender women in California prisons had been sexually abused. Um, and so now we have a 16-year-old transgender girl with no criminal charges held in solitary confinement for 30 days, potentially longer, up to a year, um, you know, vulnerable to all these harms and getting absolutely no care. And Aaron Romano, what are your next steps in terms of defending uh, your client uh, and in the situation that she's in right now? Well, we filed a lawsuit in federal court to seek an injunction to prevent uh, Doe's further incarceration in the adult uh, facility. As you pointed out earlier, uh, DCF, the, the offenders against Doe, have not been brought to justice. And, in fact, uh, DCF, rather than seeking the uh, arrest and uh, investigation and conviction of those people and having them brought to prison, uh, they're seeking the victim of, a, of sexual abuse. Uh, being brought to uh, a, a, an adult facility. It just shocks the conscience that they would go ahead and do something like and this. And finally, Chase, what does the ACLU recommend? I think that there's a number of things that can be done. We need greater oversight, generally, over our prisons and our jails and our immigration detention facilities, where people are being sexually abused routinely. Uh, we need mechanisms for keeping people safe that don't include locking them in concrete boxes for 22 and 23 hours a day. Mm -hmm.